morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to welcome you to another episode of Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And I'm Nan, and this is Winnie. And Winnie is my dog, and he can't be with us at the bookstore, can he? No, because dogs, dogs aren't allowed because he's reading too. He has glasses just like Nan. <laughs> yeah. So Winnie can't be here. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's not glasses. Dogs don't wear glasses? Well, Winnie does. How about that? Is that yeah, funny? Yeah. yeah, that's kind of funny. Well, I want to welcome you all here and tell you how happy I am that you're here. And if you notice, Nan has on her pumpkin necklace. Because what holiday is coming up pretty soon? Fall. It is fall. It is the season of fall. And what holiday is coming in two weeks from today? Halloween. Halloween. Right. Yeah, no, we go That's you're going to be a ghost. Well, what I did today is I brought lots of books that have to do with fall and pumpkins and Halloween. And the first book I brought says. It's pumpkin time. Has anybody gone to pick pumpkins or anything like that? Did you go pick pumpkins or go to a pumpkin patch? No. Well, we're going to read apples, apples too this time apples. of year. That's right. So this is a story that's called It's Pumpkin Time, and the author is Zoe Hall. All summer long, my brother and I get ready for our favorite holiday. Halloween. Can you guess what it is? Halloween. We guessed it. Halloween. And can you guess what we do to get ready? We plant a jack-o'-lantern patch. It's like a pumpkin patch, right? First, I turn the soil with the shovel, and my brother uses the spade, which is like a little shovel, to dig narrow rows, just one inch deep. Then, we drop in pumpkin seeds and cover them with the soil. Just like you plant anything else, you put the seeds in the ground. And there's his little friend, he has a little puppy too. We water them and wait for the sun to warm them. Before long, the seeds grow tiny roots and small green shoots poke up out of the ground. The plants begin to sprout. The shoots grow into vines and the vines grow longer. See them growing? Every week we water them and pull out the weeds. So she's a very good gardener, isn't she? Huh? She's pulling out the weeds. Soon we see buds where the flowers will bloom. The yellow flowers show us where our pumpkins will grow. And I brought one of those to show you later on. Because Nan has pumpkins and squash in her garden. I have a garden. Yeah, good for you. At first, the pumpkins are green and tiny. See the little pumpkin? But they grow bigger and bigger. Soon it is fall, which it is now, and our great big pumpkins change color from green to yellow. But they're not ripe yet. What color do they have to end up? Orange. Orange. To orange. We were right. Now they are ready to be picked. We have never grown such a big pumpkin. Mom and Dad help us cut the pumpkins from the vines. We gather them in a wheelbarrow and take them home. Look at the puppy looking at the, at the pumpkin. <laughs> it's Halloween at last. We draw faces on the pumpkins and Mom and Dad help us cut them. We hollow them out and we light candles inside. Now they are jack-o'-lanterns. This is my favorite. Can you guess what we do next? What do they do next? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know either. We put on our costumes and we go trick or treat. Off they go. She's a kitty. She looks like she became a kitty. Happy Halloween. There you go. Look at this one's a scary. This is a happy jack-o'-lantern. This one looks like a scary jack-o'-lantern. All different kinds. All different kinds. All right. The next book I brought is called How Big Could Your Pumpkin Grow? And the author of this book is Wendell Miner. 
Wait till you see. You got, you, you, you got two pumpkin stories. I do. I have two pumpkin stories. I have lots of pumpkin stories. <laughs> Can we think, what's another word for big? Can you think of another word that means wow. big? That's the opposite of big. Is there another word that means big? Maybe huge. What's another word? Enormous, gigantic. This is a story that uses all different words for the word big or huge pumpkin. Look at these. At the pumpkin farm, we pick the perfect pumpkin. Some are little, some are big, and some are giant sized. Look at this one. That's a scarecrow. Giant pumpkin festivals are tons of fun. Did anybody go to the Topsfield Fair or anything like that? Yeah, you saw big pumpkins. Did you go? Will the biggest pumpkin set a world record? Wow, they weigh them, and the biggest pumpkin usually gets a prize. What can you do with an enormous pumpkin? Can you carve it into a boat and go for a race? <laughs> Look at them, they're in gigantic pumpkins in the water. That's silly. Oh, look at this guy. He's gigantic. And he is a legend. His name was Paul Bunyan and his big blue ox. They were giants and they liked to think big. If they gave you a giant pumpkin seed, how big would your pumpkin grow? Because pumpkins grow from pumpkin seeds. Oh, look at these guys. Would it rise as high as hot air balloons at a festival? Where's the, where's the pumpkin flying? Here it is. It's up with all the hot air balloons. These balloons are all in their costumes, aren't they? Yeah, they're all in their costumes. Or beam as bright as the lighthouse at the beach. Look at how big it is. You know how tall lighthouses are. Your gigantic pumpkin could glow like the skyscrapers. The skyscraper is a big, tall building. But watch out, the horns will honk on the bridge if it blocks traffic. Oh, I wouldn't want a pumpkin to land on the highway. That would be terrible. They do things big in Texas. Texas is a state in the United States. Would your giant pumpkin be the boss in a cowboy hat? Yeah! <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. Or a hungry monster gobbling up the riders on the fastest roller coaster. Look at I wouldn't want to be on that ride. Well, you can it's go gonna through go like right into the mouth. Well, we can go through it again. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a scary ride. Imagine if your pumpkin was too immense for hide and seek and couldn't even hide. Look, it's hiding behind that big building. Because the witch still. Yeah, and the witch is flying across the moon. Or perhaps your mighty pumpkin could grow to be president. This is a special place in South Dakota where there's statues, there's carved statues of some of the presidents of the United States. And here's the pumpkin. He wants to be president. Um, I thought you talked to before. Yeah. Would your stupendous pumpkin make a super splash on top of a waterfall? What if he falls in? There, one, two, three, blast off. Would your astronomical pumpkin, that's a big word, smile to see a rocket zoom to the moon? What's this? This is the Grand Canyon, which is in Arizona in the United States. Could your most colossal pumpkin fill the Grand Canyon? Who knows? But it's fun to imagine giant pumpkins everywhere we go. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a river. How about that? That was all about gigantic pumpkins. All right. This next one I brought is, it just traces, it goes through how pumpkins grow. And I brought a flower for you to see. And this, the name of this book is just Pumpkin Pumpkin by Jean Tithington. And the first thing we have is a little boy named Jamie and he plants pumpkin seed. Can you see the tiny pumpkin seed? Yeah. It's just a tiny little pumpkin seed. You can eat the pumpkin seeds, you know, after you carve out your pumpkin, if you toast them in the oven, you let mom or dad or grandma or grandpa toast them for you and you put a little salt and they're yummy. 
Yeah, your grandma can do it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. My grandma can do it. Hi there. Too. And the pumpkin uh, seed. I'm not a grandma boy anymore. No, no. The pumpkin seed grows to be a pumpkin sprout. There's a tiny little sprout there. And the pumpkin sprout grows a pumpkin plant. Here's his plant. Then the pumpkin plant grows a pumpkin flower. And this is what Nan brought to show you. Because I have these plants in my garden. And this picture is of the pumpkin flower in the garden. Butterfly. Yeah, and there's a butterfly there. And this is a real pumpkin flower that I took out of my garden this morning. Yeah, how about that? Can you see it? Crazy look. Yeah, this is a pumpkin flower. Be careful, it's very delicate. If you touch it, it just breaks. It's very delicate. It's very, very delicate. You know what that means? It breaks easy. Yeah. yeah, isn't that cute? So I brought this to show you that they really are. They come in the garden, and they come just before the pumpkin comes. How's that? Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. So now you can say you've seen a pumpkin flower. The pumpkin flower grows to be a pumpkin. And if you pick the flower, like Nan did, the pumpkin won't grow behind it. So you have to leave the flower so the pumpkin grows. And the pumpkin grows. Look at the frog on his head. And grows. And grows. Here it's so big you can sit on it. Until Jamie picks it. And then he can bring it in the house and he can. That's gigantic. He has to use his wagon, doesn't he? He has to use his wagon. He's got such a big pumpkin. All right, the next one I read. The next one I that was a quick book. Yeah, that was a short book because I brought my flower to go with. Does anybody remember the very first time they went trick or treating? I do. I remember the first time I went trick or treating. You too. Do you know what I was the first time I went trick or treating? I was a kitty. I was a kitten. How about that? Does anybody remember what you were? What were you the first time you went trick or treating? Princess. A princess. That's a good thing to be. That's a nice thing to do. I'll be a knight. He's going to be a knight? No, no, I'll be a knight. You're going to be a knight. Well, good for you. Well, this is about this little boy named Herbert. This little boy named Herbert. And it's about his very first Halloween. And this is one of my favorite authors. It's Cynthia Ryland. She writes really nice books. What's honey? Is he shy? You think he's going to be shy? I think he's a pig. <laughs> he's a pig. I think Herbert is a pig. All right. Herbert was not too sure about you were right. He was not too sure about this Halloween stuff. He wasn't too sure about it. I think he was a little nervous. Herbert's father loved Halloween. He was very excited that this was Herbert's first Halloween. Herbert's father showed him an old photograph of when he was a little boy on Halloween. It was hard for Herbert to know if it was actually him under that big cowboy hat. That's when I was three, said Herbert's father. Herbert was still not too sure. Yeah, he was a cowboy for Halloween. I didn't want to be spooky, said Herbert's father. I wanted to be a cowboy. Can I be a cowboy, asked Herbert. Sure you can. Can I be a tiger? Yeah, said his father. Sure, you can be anything you want to be, right? A tiger. Herbert's father measured Herbert head to toe. He's measuring him for his costume. He measured his ears. He measured his tail. He measured him for paws and claws. That rhymes, that's right. Herbert asked, can I roar? The answer was yes. Herbert could roar on Halloween. He practiced it in his closet. Can you guys roar like a tiger? Let me hear you roar like a tiger. Can you roar with me like a tiger? Who can roar with me? There you go. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. All right. You come over here. Stand over here so the kids can see the book. There you go. Herbert's father carved a Halloween pumpkin. He gave it a big smile because the pumpkin was so happy to be at Herbert's house. They named it Jack. 
and they put it on the porch. My grandpa, Ooh. my grandpa, um, my grandma calls oh, my grandpa Jack. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he's not a pumpkin, though, is he? <laughs> no. Herbert's father told Herbert about the candy. Mm. On Halloween, it's everywhere, said Herbert's father. Everywhere, asked Herbert. You will need a bucket, said Herbert's father. A bucket, asked Herbert. A big one, said his dad, while sewing up a very fine tiger's tail. On the last day of October, which is two weeks from today, Jack put on his biggest, brightest smile. Here's Jack the pumpkin. And Herbert put on his costume. First the ears, then the tail, then the paws with the claws. He's getting all dressed up to go trick-or-treating. Herbert took his father's hand. I'm ready, said Herbert. And because he had been practicing, he gave a very big roar. Everybody roar. Oh, there you go, just like Herbert. Good for you. As they walked from house to house, Herbert saw other children in their costumes. Here were all the children trick-or-treating. What did his father dress up as? Cowboy. A cowboy again. That was his favorite costume. That was his favorite costume. The little ghost said, what does a ghost say? Trick-or-treat. He could. And he could also say, boo. Can you say boo? Boo. boo. Don't scare me. Boo. But boo. Herbert said, what does Herbert say? What noise does he make? Oh, ah! that's right. <laughs> Just as Herbert's father had promised, candy was everywhere. Herbert roared many, many thank yous. Oh, he was very polite. Uh -oh. Then it was time to go home. You are a very good tiger, said Herbert's father. I might be a bear next year, said Herbert. Bears can be scary, said Herbert's father. Are you sure? Herbert gave it some thought. The answer was yes. He was sure. So next year he's going to want to be a bear instead of a tiger. That was good. That was a good story. All right. The next one is, again, all about Halloween and all the different things that have to do with Halloween. Let's see if we can think of some things that have to do with Halloween. We said pumpkin. What else has to do with Halloween? Anything else? Maybe witches? Ghosts? Anything else? Nothing. Candy? Nothing. Lots of things have to do Nothing. with Halloween. Well, that's what this book is about. And this is another one of my Nothing. favorite authors. Her name is Gail Gibbons. Costumes have to do with Halloween? Good for you. So that's what this book is about. It's all about different things that have to do with Halloween. And every page starts the same. It says Halloween is... It's a fall celebration. And it started many, many years ago. And it is celebrated on October 31st weeks from today. Yeah. Halloween has many symbols. Halloween is pumpkins. Pumpkins come in all shapes and sizes. They are a symbol of autumn. Many people like to carve pumpkins. They put candles or lights inside them. When they are lit, they glow. Halloween is Halloween decorations. Halloween decorations can be seen everywhere. These are things you might have in your house. Corn stalks, pumpkins, gourds. Many symbols of Halloween are put on the doors or in the windows of people's homes, just like we do. I have a pumpkin outside my house. Good for you. Halloween is masks and costumes. That's what you said. It's time for make-believe. Some people dress up as witches. Others dress up as ghosts and monsters. All kinds of masks and costumes can be seen on Halloween. People pretend to be whatever they want to be. And they can be a skeleton, too. Halloween is scary story time. I didn't bring any scary story time. Skeletons are scary. Today, they are used to scare people and have fun. And Look also, weird and scary uh, stories can be enjoyed. Oh, she has a green nose on. She looks silly, doesn't she, huh? She looks silly. <laughs> Halloween is for trick or treat. In the past, some children would go from house to house dressed up in costumes asking for a treat, which is what we do, right? If the person didn't give them a treat, they used to do a trick to get the treat. 
Can you imagine what trick I would have to do? Maybe a somersault. What trick could I do? I can do a cartwheel. Can you do it? You could do a cartwheel and get a treat. Yeah, we could do tricks to get a treat. Today, people have fun when trick or treaters come to their homes. They enjoy seeing the different costumes. <laughs> trick or treat bags are filled with Halloween treats. You can do a forward roll for your trick. That would be good. No, I can't. You can? There you go. There you go. Halloween is for Halloween parties and Halloween games. Yeah, that's the one about the nose. Dad, that's a catch. Yeah. Often people celebrate Halloween by giving parties. It is fun to guess who is who because if you're in a costume and you have a mask, Somebody might not know who you are, right? You're sort of in disguise. No one knows who you are. Bobbing for apples is an old English game. And there are many other Halloween games, too. Is anyone going to a Halloween party? Yeah, I like Halloween parties. Halloween is for candied apples and other Halloween treats. All kinds of party snacks can be enjoyed. A Halloween party? Yeah, well, maybe you'll go to another one. <gasps> it's about scary plays and haunted houses. Is you have to go do the haunted houses. Oh, I don't want to do that. Some schools put on Halloween plays. Parents come to enjoy. Sometimes there are make-believe haunted houses for people to go through, and they scream, eek! They get afraid. Halloween is for sometimes parades and make believe and a time for saying the fake monsters. Boo! They're fake monsters. They're fake monsters. That's right. That's right. All right. I have one more book. That's right. The next book I brought is about a pumpkin who loses its nose. Does everybody have their nose with them today? Do you have your nose with you? Mine's right here. Have you ever lost your nose? Have you ever bent over and your nose fell off? Yeah, but someone, <laughs> but I don't know his name. Yeah, I don't, I've never lost my nose. I've never lost my nose. It's always with me. Yeah. Well, this is a story about a pumpkin who loses her nose. Okay, and this is, we're going to read about how they find her nose. This guy's name is Dr. Pompo. Roll, rolling on his morning rounds, doctors go around and check on all their patients in the morning. That's called their morning rounds. Yeah. Dr. Pompo froze. What was that on the ground? Could it be a nose? In this book, we have to listen for the rhymes because there's rhymes in this book. There he is. Hello? Along came Uncle Wrinkle, who asked Dr. P, What's that you've got there, Pompo? It's hard for me to see. It seems to be a nose, I think, said Pompo to his friend. I guess someone has lost it, and it's standing on its end. <gasps> this is a lost nose. I'm glad I didn't lose my nose, because how could I smell I my supper? I didn't supper? lose my nose. Yeah. <laughs> Wrinkle. Because I want to smell the yummy supper. That's right. Wrinkle frowned. Oh, Dr. P, it's nothing of the kind. An absent-minded gardener has left that thing behind. It's a tool for gardening, like a, a shovel. As everybody knows, someone had to dig up weeds before they grew this rose. They wanted to smell the rose. They wanted to smell the rose. How can you smell a rose without your nose? You can't do that. Oh, look at all these guys. Nimpkin said, I think this thing's a horn for calling sheep. It's useful when you need them. And they all have gone to sleep. Here he has it on his ear. And he's trying to listen. See, he's got it on the side of his head, and he's trying to listen Wait, like it's a horn. Wait, that's way too much. I didn't know that. I... Oh, my. That's way too much. It's a horn, I'm all right, laughed lie. Jack, but not for blowing notes. I've seen something just like that upon the head of goats. He thinks it's a horn for the head of a, of a goat. I don't think that's what it is. Mrs. Gordon disagreed. It's a horn to hear. Everything sounds clearer when you put it to your ear. <laughs> she put it on her ear. She's trying to hear. 
Maybe it's a fossil of an ancient dinosaur, said Sarah B. excitedly, and looked at it some more. You think it's a piece of a dinosaur? Could be a part of a dinosaur, do you think? No, it's a dinosaur. I think it's a... I don't know, we'll see. Pumpkin is. Good heavens, said Miss Sniffin, and how do you suppose I lost it over there? Please, doctor, help me with my nose. She's got a cold. How do you sound when you have a cold? So she's, how do you sound without your nose? Your I nose is all stuffed up. Dr. Pompo put it back right between her eyes. She thanked him while the others just looked on in surprise. <laughs> Nobody thought it was her nose. Perhaps when I leaned over to sniff the little rose, I sneezed so hard, I guess I just sneezed right off my nose. Imagine sneezing so hard that your nose falls off. Miss Sniffin's good as new, and I hope that all your pumpkins have learned a thing or two. No matter what the problem is, it often is the case that the answer to the problem is right upon your face. The nose was right in his face. And that was the answer to his problem. All right. <laughs> I know, I brought one more, but I don't know if people have. This one is, this one is all about how summer turns. Do you have to go, honey? Okay, all right, well, let me give you your, your, your surprise, and everyone else can have your surprise when you finish. Okay, yeah, you're gonna get your surprise, too, but after, I brought you all a pumpkin necklace. Wow. And you can oh, have yours. Uh -huh. You can have yours. Where's the good? Uh, this is your goodie. Yeah. All right, this is your goodie. You can put that on and you can wear it for Halloween. How's that? Yeah. You can wear it for Halloween. All righty. I okay. didn't wear my goodie. Well, I'm going to give Halloween. you yours before you go home, okay? Yeah. Before Where's you go the goodie? Home. That's it, honey. That's your goodie. <laughs> 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 okay? Claire. All right, well, thank you for coming. And I have one more book for the rest of you before you go, okay? And this is all about how we say goodbye to summer and hello to autumn. What's autumn? Autumn is another word for fall. That's the season we're in right now. All right? Hello, late summer morning. <laughs> hello, trees. Thank you. Bye-bye, thank you, honey. Hello, now, that's the cool winds have come. We love how our branches sway in the sun. When the wind blows, the branches sway and they go back and forth. Hello, playful foxes and singing blue jays. Hello, we are busy looking for food. Some of us are heading south to our winter homes. Sometime when it gets cold, the animals move and they go someplace where it's warmer so that they don't get, they don't get colds in the winter. Hello, walking stick and butterflies. Hello, we're surprised you saw us. We try our best to blend in, and we'll do the same in warmer places. Hello, beaver. Hello, chipmunks. I have a lot of chipmunks in my yard. We have no time to play because we're making cozy nests and dens. It will be cold soon, and we want to get ready. That's what the chipmunks in my yard are doing. They're all making their winter nests, and they're collecting all the acorns and getting all ready for winter. Hello, flowers. We are leaning into the sun, enjoying the last summer rays. Some of us, like asters and phlox, are late bloomers. Some flowers bloom in the fall. We make the end of the season very colorful. Hello, thunder. Oh, a lot of times in the fall we have thunderstorms. You can hear my low rumble from far away. My clouds loom over the fields and the quiet hills. Hello, breezy wind. I love to whoosh and drizzle and leaves through the misty streets. Hello, chill in the air. Like this morning, we had to put on our sweaters, didn't we? It's time to bring out your thick sweaters and scarves. Hello, now that the wind has come, I often get covered with fallen leaves. 
We have to rake them up, put them in bags. Hello, leaves. We are changing our colors. Some of us turn red and brown, while others turn gold or yellow. The dogwood leaves turn purple. Oh, I wish I had that. That would be a pretty tree. Hello. I am setting earlier and earlier that summer is coming to an end. But I will see you again tomorrow. Who's talking? What sets earlier every day? The what? It's up in the sky. The sun. The sun sets earlier and earlier. Goodbye, summer. It's all gone. But summer will be back, right, next year? Yep. Yep, summer will be back. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. That's right. That's <laughs> Not right. enough for me. Well, I want to thank you all for coming today. And I have two things for you. I have a craft for you to take home. I have a craft for you to take home, which is what I did. <laughs> How did I do? Do you like my jack-o'-lantern? I made a happy jack-o'-lantern. How's that? Is that cute? He's happy. So when I made... I put pumpkins on the paper for you guys, and you can take them home. I did the best I could. <laughs> you can color them and put on whatever. You can make a scary face or a happy face, whatever kind of face you want to put on your jack-o'-lantern. All right, so before you leave, make sure you take one of these and your necklace to wear on Halloween. All right, so let me give you your your treats and thank you all for coming and if you want to watch yourself and hear yourself on TV you can go to the Reading channel it's channel 9 and story time with me and Dan is on there usually around 10 in the morning and sometimes around 4 in the afternoon so you can just search for that on the schedule for a story time with Winnie and Man it's on the Reading channel with that so thank you for coming and I'll hand out the treats before you go